Hello, today we're going to show you how to set up a webinar using Microsoft Teams. Um, Excellent idea hosting a webinar at the end of September and I thought why not take you through it while I set one up myself. So first of all you're going to need to open the Microsoft Teams app and then you're going to look for the I go into calendar and then on the right hand side there's a drop down menu and I'm going to look for webinar. Now before we begin um, it is so much easier if you already know the information um, you'll be inserting. So you're going to need to know your title, description, the dates, who's going to be co-organizing, presenters, um, author bio, um, what settings you're going to need. Whilst I will go through it, um, it's a lot easier for you to have this information ready. So let's start with the title. So I'm going to copy and paste. I know you can't see it. I'm going to copy our title in here and there we go um, and our date so you set your date by clicking in the box we are going to be on the 30th of September we are starting at 11 o'clock and we want it to end on the same day obviously at 12 o'clock so that gives us an hour window 30 40 minutes of the presentation leaves us plenty of time for a Q&A, um, which we have found so far to be a really effective way to run a webinar. So now we're going to add the event description. So once again, I'm going to copy mine in, but as you can see, it's fairly straightforward. It gives you a really, really high level overview of what the webinar is going to be about. So let's people know where they want to join. So now we're going to go down here and we need to add people to help organize the event. So in this situation, there's no other co-organizers, it's just myself. However, Anne Beer will be presenting from our organization. So therefore, I've got Anne in this section here. You can also add external uh, presenters just by doing the same type of name, the address you want they will get a unique link to join. So once you've filled in your co-hosts and your presenters, externals, internals, you then want to go down to event access. Now, there's two options to this. You can either open it to the public so anyone on the internet can view the event registration page and sign up, or you can just host it so only people within the organization can view the event page and register. We want our customers to join, so we leave this on public. We also leave enable attendee emails on, and we've also turned this on, which allows people to share the event page with their friends, their colleagues. And obviously that's fantastic for us because more people can sign up and receive value from our webinars. So definitely turn that one on. So now we're gonna scroll down to attendee experience. So this is where you can decide whether you want your attendees to put their mics on, uh, have their cameras on, whether they wanted to participate in a QA. Um, we always have our uh, members turn their cameras off and the mics off. We do this, well, it's down to personal preference, but we do this because we don't like the webinars to be interrupted. Um, but it also really does depend on the type of webinar you are hosting. Maybe you want something a bit more interactive. We prefer to take everything in the chat or the QA. Um, and we prefer the flow that way. But like I said, it's completely up to you. So we go through these settings, manage what people say, uh, see, we usually leave this one off, use uh, mic for attendees off, camera for attendees off, like I said, you can change this if you want. We keep Q&A on um, and hide attendee names. Now this is, this is once again, personal preference. We usually leave this off, um, but maybe you want Maybe you want it to be a bit more private and you don't want to see uh, people to see who's in there, then you can just, you can just turn it on. We're going to look at meeting options now. So now looking at meeting access, who can bypass the lobby? To be honest, I usually leave this on people who are invited. Um, I have tinkered around with these settings and then manually let people in. Um, I think it's just once again, one of those ones for preference. People dialing in can bypass the lobby. I always leave this one off as well. Like I said, I do like to accept people. Um, maybe some people are a little bit early too. 
Attendees with a registration link can bypass the lobby. I leave this on. Who can admit from the lobby? Um, yeah, we usually, to be honest, I usually cover this with the organization because the other hosts already have the, the stress of hosting a webinar. So I take the lead here. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can, share, you can share it if you like. Reject anyone who can't pass. I keep this off. Announce when people are dialing. I leave this off once again. I, I leave most of these settings off. Advanced protection. Once again, leave off, leave off, leave off, and leave off. Um, well, saying that, this one might be a really nice option. I don't think I've seen this one personally before, so I'm going to turn it on. Um, I haven't tested this personally, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's no reason why this couldn't be on. Roles, um, I just leave this blank once again. Production tools. No, just leave this on, enable um, green room. Um, yeah, basically you can just, you could, exactly what it says, you could just turn it on, make someone a presenter before the meeting starts and it kind of gives you that extra couple of minutes to prepare. Participation, so it's basically the same again. We don't allow mics, we don't allow cameras, but this is down to personal preference. Uh, meeting chat, we have this, um, we have this on in the meeting only. Q&A, who manages the Q&A? Me and the co-host. So I will do a lot of this, but also the host will come in and when they get a moment, they will review questions. So, and it's nice then because they can answer at the time or they can save it to the end. It does, really does depend on the flow of the webinar. We always allow reactions. You can't fault a nice heart or a thumbs up or a clap. I think it's a nice bit of uh, motivation for the host if they see that. Once again, you can hide the attendees' names and allow attendance report. Yes, you want that on. You want to see who's came to your webinar, how long they've been there for. Um, so yeah, that's definitely an important one if you're looking to track the data. We record and transcribe. Uh, we want this. We want every single webinar we do to go straight out within, ideally within a couple of hours of the recording ending. Not everyone can make a webinar. Um, but people still want to see it. And if everything has gone perfect, you're able to send this out with inside Microsoft Teams by just a click of a button. So yes, we want this. You can also download the recording and then you can upload it to your other channels, your YouTube and your social media. Choose a language. Once again, we give everyone the access. And that's it. We don't. We have never touched this end, so we press apply here, and we move on to the next section. Okay, moving on to present the bios now. Oh, press save, of course. So let's move on to present the bios. Good timing. So here we can edit Anne's bio. Like I said action site. You can put in the LinkedIn personal website. I like to put Excellence IT, um, just, it just makes sense really, and there's another personal website. Add an image, always add an image, it's nice for that personal touch. And then a little bio alongside the job title. You Typically, it's, we put one or two sentences, um, and then check with the person before you do it. But yeah, and then you would press save. Theme in. So, you can create a banner. We create a banner in Canva usually, and then we update these. So I'm just gonna fill in these uh, now. And here we go. So this is the banner I'm gonna go with and the logo for the business. And then you get a very limited choice of color, unfortunately. So you kind of have to work with what you've got. So yeah, let's move on to the next section, registration. So you may want to cap your event. Um, I'd love for our webinar to get a thousand people, but yeah, so we're not going to quite uh, reach that one. But I do select the option to require manual approval of all event registrations. Um, reasons for this are we like to provide custom, customer-only webinars. Really, we want to give that extra value and ensure. Um, yeah, we're just 
we're just providing that extra value for our customers. And by limiting who can join, we make sure it stays customer only. Um, you also do have the option to then therefore manage competitors who may want to have a look and see what's going on. So that's one way of minimizing people you don't necessarily want there. there. So we always put that on. And then we had a form. So in order for people to register for the webinar, we want a little bit more information when they sign up. And we like to put job title. We do put it as a required field. It just helps us with our data. Even though we know our customers and typically what their positions are, that may not always be the case. And therefore we can see at the end of the webinar X amount of directors or X amount of finance people turned up and we can kind of see nice patterns. So we definitely have job title, but like I said, it's preference. Um, organization, you want to know the business name of who joins. You want to know where they come from. Um, if we have 10 people coming from one company, we know that they're more likely to be interested in maybe something after the webinar. So it's kind of a, it's kind of good to understand um, another example is if we did one on AI, we may have just one or two people, but we may have, you know, like 15 and then you can know they are more technology focused. You can provide that little bit extra to those companies. So yeah, um, we go with those two. I don't think there's anything else off the top of my head. No, and we don't, you, well, you have the option of adding customized questions, uh, but we don't, but like I said, it always goes back to depending on what you want for your webinar. So yeah and then press save once you are done attendee status so once you publish you will be able to see who you've declined who you've accepted and who is pending um so yeah you don't get notifications for this so you have to come inside the team's actual calendar to come and have a look and accept so once the webinar is live this is a section you'll be coming back to very regularly so emails so when people sign up, they get an email when it's basically once they've been rejected, if the webinar's cancelled, time, date, anything that changes, and most importantly, the two at the bottom, which are the one hour before it starts is a reminder for everyone, and then the one which is you can send the recording to everyone after after it's done. And you can go in and edit these. So when I click edit and you can change these. So we keep it pretty simple, um, but you may wanna say, uh, get in touch if you want to know more information on X, Y, Z, or anything really like that. These are these are customizable within reason. Um, so yeah, and you can preview your message there. But I highly recommend leaving these on and personalizing these just a little bit um, so they're not too bog standard. Let's go over to the report section now. Oh, so this is the section. Once the event ends, um, there's usually a brief, there's a little bit of a wait for the data to come through properly. So you may get um, mini reports, which is like in between certain minutes that come up. But I would personally give this two to three hours and then come back and have a look and then download that data. Um, and then you go through there. Do, do not panic if this don't, um, refresh instantly. I've worried many of times myself that thinking, oh, you've just done all this work, you've just had the attendees, and you can't see even who attended. Um, but no, you've just got to wait a few hours and then all the data should um, arrive. Okay, over to recordings now. So this is where you'll be able to download um, your recording. You can say, put it to your OneDrive, the transcript. So once you're done, come back and have a look connect apps so this is nothing that we use personally but there is an option to connect other apps if you've got like hubspot so so now i have just triple checked everything because um you never know one little button may disrupt your webinar so just go back double check you're happy with everything and then before you press publish site you can now view draft it's going to drag over the other screen uh, and you can see here's our banner everything is fine 
our speakers with the photos, bios, and then the option to register. And here you will see the form. So your name, your email, your organization, and your job title. Once people agree, you'll be able to submit for approval, which then comes back to being on the attendee status page very, very often because you want to make sure people are getting accepted as soon as possible. So they get that confirmation, they get it in their calendars. This is pretty much it. And once you're ready, you can click publish site. So, and there we go. Here is your link. So there's no need to worry about keeping this safe. But once you put it in, you'll be able to see the live site. So this is live now for everyone to go to. So you can send the link to everyone you want to put in an email. So yeah, now you've got that link, you're able to send that out to everyone. You might want to put it in your emails, might want to put it in your footer and link it together so people can see it. Um, but if you do go back into the web now, there is always copy event link. So there's no need to worry about keeping that link safe. And there's plenty of opportunity where you can find it. And you can then view your published site anytime you want by clicking the button, which will lead you back to this page. So yeah, hopefully you found that useful. Um, there is a lot of trial and error with webinars, um, especially when it comes to actually hosting it. There may be a few things that you didn't expect, but that's all part of the learning process. But hopefully this will guide you to setting it up um, as well as you can really. And if you are interested in signing up for Minimize the Risk of a Phishing Attack webinar on Tuesday 30th of September, um, feel free to register. If you're watching this after, always feel free to get in touch on info at excellence-it.co.uk where we will be able to send you a copy of that webinar. But they do also get posted on our YouTube channel too.